Hi, welcome everybody. This is our first podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Brody. I'm Sahara. And today we're joined by Iowa Valley varsity wrestling coach, J High football and baseball coach, Mr. Jeremy Kriegel. A round of applause for him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, first guys. Guest. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a no big deal. problem. We went big time right out of the shoot. I like it. I know. Uh-huh. We had to start big, you know? Yeah. Go big or go home. All in. Exactly. Right, Jack? Yeah. You guys can't see over here. Our man, Jack Marshall, is over there. And Maddie Shade. Out. Yeah. <laughs> she's just over there giggling all she does is like the giggle effects it's like the background effects yeah exactly what mm-hmm. do you got for us maddie okay oh uh, you got nothing for us all this right first so how was how was your christmas break was it pretty good oh I, I had a very good christmas break yeah yeah so i always look forward to christmas break because for a couple reasons you know we have a uh to rest rest our bodies you know it's a good time to hang out with family and friends and uh as far as wrestling, I like to have that week of preparation, and we just have good practices all week, and the kids are able to go home and get rest out of it as well. And we, uh, you know, it was nice and relaxing. I was ready to recharge my batteries and get going again on Monday. So it's also your birthday during Christmas break Ooh. on Christmas, big time. <laughs> yeah, you know, you may or may not have heard this that I, I usually get forgotten about at my birthday on oh. Christmas. Oh, there, darn you it. know, and so, so I, this year though, the the managers went out of their way. Sahara, Ella, Stella. Give them a shout out. They gave me a present there. It was pretty good. It was kind of, it was very fitting for me. Yeah. So you guys put a lot of That's thought into that. We were doing during practice and you kept complaining that I wasn't doing anything for you, but. Okay. So you, know. you give shout outs there for <laughs> JC and not me. So. Well, that's because, you know, you're doing more. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah. no, it was, because it was a good birthday this year. Yeah. I turn like the it. old four zero. Big 40. Yeah. You probably Ooh. couldn't tell looking at me. Oh. No, no, you no You know way. that I don't, you know, but yeah, it's just a number. But my wife and your mother are a little bit older than me. So are both of your parents. Just a little there. bit. Just so, a little bit. You know, it's all right there. I can live with that. So <laughs> I'm good. I feel good at 40. Yeah, that's pretty good. So obviously you're the, you're the head wrestling coach. How do you think the beginning of the season's went so far? Um, right now, I tell you, I've talked to a lot of different people about our season. They ask me the same question. And th- this is a very – every year is a unique group of people that we have go out. And I say people because we have both male and female out too. So uh, – it's just a unique group of uh, people that we have uh, very good numbers. Um, we have a wide range of kids, the first-year kids out, all the way up to, you know, experienced kids that have been wrestling in Des Moines, a couple district qualifiers, um, and kids that have never wrestled before. So it's a, it's a great group of kids to work with, probably my most enjoyable group of kids to work with overall as far as how hardworking they are, how coachable they've been, um, just – a joy to be in the room with uh the first half of the season always is kind of a learning curve for a lot of them we have to find out where a lot of the kids are mentally physically where they want to be what their goals are you know that's what makes uh, wrestling such a unique sport is that you've got to coach each kid to uh, their own strengths and uh, you can't just have the same expectations for for every kid because they have their different goals or their different skill level and things like that so um finding out what each kid is uh, capable of doing and what they want to really uh accomplish for the rest of the year is what we usually gear more of our first half of the season towards and uh it was it was about as expected i guess you know our dual meet record was good we filled the lineup which is good we had a couple kids young kids step up and and cut a couple pounds there to get down to the weight to fill the lineups that we needed to be um feel like a lot of our kids learned a lot about themselves, about their ability level and their actual potential where they can get at this first half of the season. Uh, going into the Christmas break and having a couple good practices and focus on the individual work was really, really good for them too. Um, we had our first dual meet coming back last night, you know, but we had a few kids that weren't able to wrestle. But uh, going into this weekend in Brooklyn and, and our the rest of our schedule is really going to push a lot of kids – mentally and physically to see where they need to be at with the rest of the state you know too so we'll start uh focusing on that as well so overall i i I couldn't be you know happier where we're at and i look forward to see where we can be great so we know you're the head wrestling coach as i've said what kind of like made you want to be the wrestling coach like what made you really want this job good question so growing up um we didn't really start wrestling at a, a very young age. My brothers, I have an older brother and a younger brother. Then I have, a, uh, I guess, two younger brothers and a sister. But my older brother's two and a half years older than me, and I have a younger brother that's a year and a half younger than me. Then there's a bigger gap. So it was us three growing up. And we didn't really start wrestling at a very uh, young age. And the uh, youth tournament circuit isn't like it used to be. 
or as I should say as it is right now. So we didn't wrestle in a lot of matches. And I remember we always went up north where my grandpa is from or my mom's from. And we'd always wrestle in that tournament. And I never really looked forward to doing any of that. Then as I got into junior high and high school, uh, I started excelling a little bit more at the sport and uh, kind of enjoying the individual part of the sport a little bit more. Uh, I, I wasn't really a vocal leader in the, any of the other sports I was at. And so I was able to kind of have my skill set and what I wanted to work for individually. And as I kept growing year to year, I started enjoying it more and more. Um, I did not wrestle in college, and it's one of the regrets I think that I, I had after I graduated, but there's nothing you can take back after that. And uh, going into education, I knew that I wanted to be able to work with younger kids, elementary aged, all the way up through high school, because I feel like this is a sport where you can have a unique relationship with them uh, at a very uh, personal level. And uh, it can be very, very rewarding, or it can it can take a lot away from you emotionally too. But I feel like it with, with everything that you have, you, it teaches you something with each step of the progress that you make in it. Um, and that's what I enjoy the most out of it. Uh, if I could just be a wrestling coach, I, I think that would be the greatest job in the world to just do that because I think that there's a lot of work that a lot of people don't know about that you, that you put in as a coach and that the wrestlers put in individually. So just being able to, to work with them with that is uh, my biggest, I guess, uh, advantage or my biggest like, I guess, as a wrestling coach. I don't know how to say that. So Yeah. So when you get ready for the year, how do you kind of plan out, like, the beginning to end, like, practices, you know, get everybody together? How do you kind of plan that out before season starts? So one thing that I – one of the smartest things that i ever done, I guess, is when I was an assistant coach there, I, I kept uh, notes of each practice and what we did and how the practices went, how we did at competitions, um, things that I would tweak with that. And so year to year, I always look at uh, who we have coming up, our ability level coming up, because each year, you know, you have a new crop of – junior high kids coming in. I'm pretty familiar with most of them just from being a youth club coach too here at Iowa Valley. And so you look back at those notes to see how the practices went for that year, that day, that week, and what you need to change for each one of them. And they're, they're, they're pretty similar to that. And for the most part, you know, our practices are very similar year to year for the first two or three weeks as we're getting ready. Um, but then after that, you kind of gear it towards what you feel uh, your team needs as the year goes on. So a couple of weeks out, I'll always look at our schedule to see what we're doing. And then I'll start printing out our practice schedules and look at that and then uh, kind of go from there. Uh, this year's been a little bit different because we have a lot more kids that are uh, first year kids. So we've had to slow things down a lot more and focus on the technique, which is not all that bad because uh, even some of our veteran wrestlers, uh, tend to stray away from doing things the right way. <laughs> That's and your main thing. Every, need, need to be do things the right way. Why would I say that, though, Sahara? <laughs> well, maybe because they have to. No. I don't know. I just what like, would we be talking I, about there, oh, Brody? I don't know. Maybe some simple shots that everyone should know or something. Simple, simple shots, simple high crotches yep. coming Sprawl, up Sprawl, grab the ankle. <laughs> so yeah. Simple sprawls, you know, simple things sprawls, like that. Simple sprawls, yeah. So, Easy, things yeah, you've been yeah. doing whole life. How about you guys, as you guys have been part of wrestling for a few years now, like what, what are your expectations going into each season? Do you guys know what, what's coming? Uh, this is your senior year. This is Kanky's third year as a manager. Like, do you kind of know what's coming? I mean, the beginning of the year, yeah, as you said, it's kind of the same. But, like, this year it definitely has, like, I know in the past years we've had, like, more experienced wrestlers. So this year I've noticed we've done a lot more technique and more of the basic, back to the basics I've noticed. But, I mean, it's been a pretty great year so far, I think. I agree. Kanky, what's your outside perspective of being at every practice and running the clock? I, I will enjoy doing it because I like to just watch them <laughs> practice. But, like, this year, the beginning of the year, I was kind of, like, wondering how it would go, like, practices and meets in general. But, like, this year has probably been one of my favorites because, like, I don't know, how to, like, the, the energy even, like, this year it's like everyone's like closer i feel like i yeah. agree i have that feeling too the energy level of, of a lot of the kids is is different yeah like we have a goofiness about the team but there's they also little, like work hard like every it. day they yeah. know they know when to bring it when they need to do it even yeah. the younger kids they they're naive that's a good way to <laughs> yeah. put it they're yeah. naive and they don't really know what to do so they and we have good leadership though you know i mean we have kids that have been through it you know like we talked about brody and jack zane pierce Quinn, Ronan, you know, those guys have been through this for three or four years there, and they know the expectations. I think a, a lot of things is, is checking their pride at the door 
because yeah. I mean, it's a very humbling sport. So as long as you're coming in there and you're willing to get yourself better and everybody else better at the same time and not just not just doing your own thing. And that, that's one thing that this team is willing to do. And I, I think that's been a big difference yeah. that we've had too. Do you think like since you run like the youth programs and stuff, building that relationship with those kids earlier, it's like better when they come into like high school and stuff like that. You think it just gives you that edge? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you spend, spend a lot of time together, you know, I mean, hours and hours in gyms with kids, with their families, with, uh, you know, their relatives too, and just getting to know each one of them individually. So I'm not, I'm not getting to know each kid on a whole nother level right when they walk in the room as a freshman, because I've known them for, for years, you know, if they were in the junior high circuit yeah. or the, our youth circuit, mm-hmm. like Jack, for example, never was, you know, and he just came in as a freshman. So I had to relearn him and kids aren't wired the same as each other. They're not wired the same as their brothers, their sisters. So you just have to learn each, each kid differently. And if, if you don't have that exposure to them at the elementary or junior high level, you just got to take time and, and, uh, learn that. So, yeah. Back to when you said that you kind of regretted not wrestling in college. How, how was your college life? Was it Obviously, you went to Iowa, so how, how was college for you? You know, I – let me think here. So, so going – I guess going out of high school, I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, I never did know exactly where I wanted to go. Um, uh, there was a lot of different smaller schools that were calling me to play a couple uh, – football or wrestling, and I, I contemplated that there too uh, – I don't know why, but I think a big decision was I was dating my wife at the time too, and she was going to a bigger school, and I just I never had the push from anybody else in high school to uh, go try something different. So I went the comfortable route and went the same route as her, and uh, I had a blast. Yeah, I think that college is one of the best times of your life if you allow it to be, but you got to be willing to learn from different experiences that you have and not continue to go down the same road or it might be a bad experience uh you know i mean (laughs) your your freshman year you know after you gave it going from iowa valley you know a class of 45 or whatever and you go to iowa and my first class was in mcbride hall with over 500 kids in it and i you know you fall asleep in that (laughs) class and the professor doesn't care the kids don't care you know you're just another number and if you sleep every day you're going to be in trouble you know your grades are going to show it there was there was a couple of days, you know, <laughs> that I might have been sleepy. I, I don't think it was my freshman year. I, I can't remember what year it was. Maybe my fr- it was my freshman or sophomore year because it was my gen eds. And I took a class with my wife. It was environmental science. And it was in that 500 people in that hall. And she would sit next to me, and I slept every single class. Oh, my. And uh, it's because I worked out really hard the, oh. right before that. Oh, yeah, so, 100%. And anyway, and, we, and I slept every single class. And then halfway through, you have to either drop the class or continue to do it. And I wasn't doing well, so I, I took a W. I withdrew. And my wife's like, are you kidding me? This is like the easiest class I've ever taken in my life. I slept the whole time. She didn't help you with homework. Yeah, I was gonna or say, why didn't you just ask her for help? Listen, my wife is an honest woman. Uh, there, she would not let me do that. I tried. Gosh darn it. So, <laughs> but I feel like everybody's college experience is going to be different depending on where they go and the group of friends they hang out with. And I was very, very fortunate on my floor to have people that were from the same type of background as me—a smaller school. So we were roommates, you know, after we lived in the dorms and the apartments and things like that. My brother Joe was my apartment or my roommate my last couple years, um, too. So uh, that's what made it even more fun. You know, we had similar, you know, values with our parents. I was able to go back home with them um, and similar interests, you know, such sports and doing things like that. So um, I'd go back in a heartbeat. You guys hear, I, 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 I like to preach a lot to a lot of you guys, too. You, you talk about your older people always preaching to you guys, but you learn and live from mistakes that you make. And I feel like I didn't make a lot of mistakes in my life there, but I've had a lot of good experiences that I (laughs) want to tell you guys like the route you want to go, but you got to pave your own path for them and learn that. So, so, I mean, it's, it's exciting for you all to go that route too. And I look forward to hearing from everybody when they come back, just to see where they're at and how things are going. And sometimes it's, you know, good. Sometimes not. So yeah, you guys, you guys are, Brody, your time of your life where it's what are you fun. the most what are you most excited for for college I'm most excited for uh well first off let's go what's Brody contemplating where's he gonna go what's he gonna do here? I think I'm pretty set on you and I you and I yep okay why why you and I uh I when I went there it was it's a pretty cool environment it's not like super huge it's not one of the biggest colleges obviously but I just felt like nice you know and then 
my cousin Kane's there, so I'll have some people I know. I don't have to go in without knowing anybody. And it seems like our person over here, Maddie, is also going too. Maddie's going there? Yeah. Oh. That's crazy. So Brody and Maddie at UNI? Yeah. You guys some are other, both going there? Some other people in our <laughs> grade are also going there, not hey. just us two. Yeah, so let's – hey, check mark that. Let's come back to that okay. one. So <laughs> we're, we're okay, let's keep going there. Now. Okay, <laughs> so you and I, what are you going to go into there? Uh, I'm thinking maybe either – Probably business. I got gotcha. you. Maybe become my own boss, entrepreneur, something big maybe. I've heard a lot of good things about you and I. A lot of people have had really good experiences. Because yeah. of that same reason. It's a bigger school, but it's a smaller setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll be good. Mm -hmm. Roommate situation. You're going to find your own or you're going to have Ooh. Rando? I keep trying to get Ronan to come to you and I, but I think he's too <laughs> smart. To, he, he, I think he's going to Iowa maybe. He's going the Iowa route, it sounds like. I know. So I was you're really trying. Rando, though. I think so. I like it. Hopefully that's a good person. Maybe oh, I'll I had some be friends stories with. There. Yeah, you guys just have some <laughs> stories, good experiences. Yeah. Kanky, what about you? You guys still got yeah. time to think. What are you thinking here? Oh, my. I, I don't know. I mean. Have you been to any visits? No. No? No. Big school, small school. I don't know. Not like, I mean, the big school would be fun, but I feel like I would be better at like a smaller one. Like, Amelia is kind of, Mount Mercy is like the main one I like kind of want to go to. So what about like the price tag on those though? Have you looked at yeah. that? Is that going to deter you? How about school. you? Is that what kept you from that? You looking well, at the price tag I, on some? I looked at like Wartburg and Loris and stuff like that. It was obviously more expensive. Crazy. But yeah. I, yeah, I kind of felt like you and I was a better cost, you know? What about you? Me. I mean, Mount Mercy. Doesn't matter. Well. Mom and dad get out the checkbook, write yeah. me a check. <laughs> 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 All right. What do you want to go into? Education, pretty much. I don't, like, high school education. Yeah? I don't know what, between, like, ag or, like, social studies. Oh, there you go. It'll be all right. Yeah. So, obviously, you graduated from Iowa Valley. How was it to come back and teach at Iowa Valley? Oh, yeah. It was not, it was not bad. It was, uh, I actually, so my route to get to Iowa Valley was, it was kind of goofy because I had an elementary education degree. It was my undergrad, but then I, I, I substitute taught here in EV and HLV a lot and, uh, the special ed job came up. And so I had enough credits to be able to apply for that. And so that's how I got that job. So it was, it was never our intention to come back here, but when stuff came up, you just take what it is. And as a teacher, it wasn't bad because um, I was about five years out of high school then. So some of those kids would have been seventh or eighth graders that were there. The di biggest difference, the weirdest part for me was teaching, was being colleagues with my former teachers because yeah, they, they were that all, must have seemed weird. They were all still here, you yeah. know. And so, I mean, I wasn't far out of but doing that. But I guess from my standpoint, I guess I didn't feel like I was a huge prick when I was in <laughs> high school. So I didn't, I didn't yeah. have any bad blood with anybody. Mm -hmm. So... So that was the biggest adjustment is, is, you know, requesting different things for my job to help my students with a teacher that I had and I kind of knew not on a personal level. Mm -hmm. So, but some of them are still here, but no, oh, it's been fun. It was a good adjustment. I've had a blast with it, obviously. It's been How long have you been here? Uh, this is my 17th year. That's as I old as I am. So, yeah. oh my. well, you said you yesterday or two days ago at practice, you were like, because so your 17th year of coaching so have you coached every year you uh, yes i've coached every year so i started on as a volunteer assistant for a couple of years then i got hired on as the assistant and then this is my ninth year head coach so yes every year i've been involved in wrestling since i've been here so uh didn't you used to be uh varsity football or? yeah i was varsity football for nine years so i was varsity football then i did jv offense <clears throat> and then i gave that up once we started having family, our kids more and more, you know. Mm -hmm. So words of wisdom here for you boys and girls there. <laughs> As you get involved in uh, your job and extracurriculars, it, you have to have a good good spouse at home or a good yeah. support system at home to allow you to do things. Without my wife, I would not be able to do the things that I'm doing right now. She, I would not have been able to be gone on Saturdays as much as I am. And then when we've got babies at home and – well, shoot, we still got babies at home. Maggie's the biggest baby out of everything. <laughs> She's 10 years old, you know, and having them at home and coming home late, you know, and her being home with them all day and being able to do that. So so having that support system, but set up and being honest and, and open about it to begin with, like this is what I want to do with my life and this is where we're going to go and them agreeing to be part of that. But she's been a part of these guys' 
in gals lives as well i mean she's very involved in the sport yeah. um with parents and with you guys and everything so uh she's kind of went through the emotional part with it too so that helps out a lot too so but yeah it's it's been yeah, quite shout a shout out to christina Woo -woo. hey <laughs> we we're just talking about that like a birthday party oh. i had my surprise birthday party there a couple of weeks ago and there's pictures of us when we were in 10th grade she's and I, I married, I married up big time. <laughs> Jack, I would have had to look out for you there, buddy. You would have went after her. She's good looking. Jeez, Jack. She still is, but man, in high school, whew, she was like a catch. Everybody was after her. If there was social media, they've been snap mapping her oh all day. Oh my goodness, snap they would have been. They would have been. <laughs> been good. I have some pictures of you from high school that oh. I'm thinking about putting in the wrestling room. So I probably had huge glasses on. Yeah, and, and you did. I probably weighed about 150 pounds. Yeah, there is one where you're like in a cheerleading outfit. Listen, that was <laughs> that, that <laughs> was a that was a senior skit uh, uh, at homecoming. Uh -huh. I won, by the way. Oh. Hey, there you had go. Had my Doc Martens on too. I bet you that was good. Aaron yeah. Bickle was probably in it too, number 56. It's just you, I think, and you're like no. dancing or something. That, uh, Everybody focuses on me then. You oh, know. you're just a star. Yeah, you know, you, you just got to <laughs> live in the spotlight when it's there. That's so true. That's good. I feel like you're still like that. So I feel, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> live in the moment. So you, uh, I always say with my glasses, I was like Clark Kent. Like I looked like a Superman. big nerd. And then like I took them off and put my singlet or my football. And then I was like Superman. Now, how do you think I got my wife? Like the hottest chick in school. She's like, gosh, dang, look at him in a singlet. Oh. I want to date him. So what happened? <laughs> I, th I think we should probably call her or something to see if yeah, but we should. We if should call her. See, I don't have my phone on. Uh, she would admit to it. it. She knows. Oh yeah, definitely. She's got mental pictures, duh. <laughs> mental. <laughs> so was wrestling your favorite sport in high school? Or what was it? Um, I think eventually it ended up being that way. Uh, I was I, I I really enjoyed playing baseball in the summer. Um, football, obviously, I I, you know, just because I like the sport. I like playing the sport was it was it but uh eventually i think after my sophomore year i was a late bloomer so i was i was always small yeah. so obviously wrestling is a sport that you can excel at when you're at any size and i think that's part of the reason why i started gravitating towards that so you know i only weighed 145 pounds as a sophomore and so in football i wasn't able to really excel at that because of my size and then obviously i started going through the change and getting bigger and i uh, started doing better in, in in the different sports so but I think it, overall, it always always was my favorite sport. It's the most I, besides weightlifting for football, I put the most work in the off season in that sport. So yeah. But yeah. can you kind of talk about like the mindset for like wrestler needs, like what they need to be good at their sport? Yep. So I I, I try to do a lot of reading because I feel like everybody is always changing and you have to evolve with the times too. Um, I've told you guys this a lot of times. I, I think it, it's the biggest thing is you've got to be have the ability to be vulnerable in the sport. And that's just vulnerable with your feelings or open about like uh, how you feel about, you know, different parts of the season or your workouts or where you want to be. And if you have a wall that's up the whole time and you're not allowing anybody else to get in, it's, it's going to be a very, very lonely island to be on when you're trying to do it all by yourself. Because wrestling, you know, in the wintertime, it's just, it's tough anyway, uh, you know, because it's, you, you're coming into the school when it's dark, you're leaving when it's dark, um, you're, you're working hard, it's just a, it's an exceptionally physically demanding sport. So being able to be vulnerable to allow your coaches and your teammates in to help you out, and so they know kind of what direction you're supposed to go with, I think is the biggest thing that you need to uh, be able to accept. Um, once you have that and you get the mental mindset of just you know, willing to be one of the toughest sons of the guns there are yeah. uh, or really willing to put the work in to try to be one of those, that's going to separate you from a lot of different kids you know, during the season and uh, separate you from everybody else later on in your life too. It, it just teaches you something uh, that you're going to find out about yourself eventually but you're going to find out about it sooner, I think, if you're willing to put the work in that uh, that's put in front of you and uh, put yourself out there, I guess, too. Uh, so I don't know. It's obviously, something I hope that you guys know that I try to pound in you guys' head yeah, every definitely. day with that, too. It might be a little bit more creative and explicit, I guess, at times when we're in the practice room than yeah. it is sometimes, right now. So. Sometimes, yeah. but we like it. But, we like you it. Know? Every so. day, like at the end of practice, even at the beginning, you always give like a super inspirational speech. 
and I always just like think about life whenever you do that like and sometimes me Stella and Elle will, will like have something to say we'll just say it to each other yeah why don't you say it out loud Cause, yeah because <laughs> usually from it or what? like ha- no not embarrassed just like at the end of practice you're yeah. just kind of in a in you the zone get in a in zone a heartfelt yeah. mood yeah. Like, it is it gets to me sometimes I'm not gonna lie it's tough it is well I mean that's where I think that <clears throat> if if a coach doesn't show their vulnerability then why would you guys show it back True. If there's always a wall up with a coach, and that's what makes this, the sport intimate, though. You know, I, only you guys in that room are going to see what goes on in that room mm-hmm. with the coaches, with the wrestlers, you know, and things like that. You guys can go out and talk about it, you know, but there's no – you're not going to have the, the personal experience that we have together with it. And I think that that's the biggest thing that I try to give to you guys with that is, it's, is you share something every, with each other. You know, every day, every year, you know, with that. And it's obviously through the years, you know, I'm quite a bit older than you guys, so I've had more experiences. And I've had different kids go through that room that have had to share those things too. And so knowing how we've dealt with them, and we've had the best of the best in the state, and we've had some kids that have struggled, and we have some kids that have really come along and and just over-exceeded what the expectations are. So and how we've dealt with them is, I don't know, it's something that you guys can grab onto and – and uh, run with it, I guess. Yeah. So it would be good. You um, always tell us in the practice room that wrestling kind of, like, gets you prepared for the real world. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, the struggles that we might face? or Yeah, and I think it's accepting responsibility for your own actions. Uh, the biggest thing about wrestling is you can, you can put the blame on anybody else uh, in anything you do in your life, in, in any other sport that's a team sport. But wrestling is the one thing where you, you can say that you're doing something – and lie to people and lie to yourself about how you're maybe, you know, trying to prepare for something, but it's just you out there yeah. uh, with another person. And uh, there's no other way to get out of it. You know, you can't, you can't ask for a, a injury timeout and have a, a teammate come in or you can't uh, pass that, pass it to somebody else, or you can't, you know, have a designated hitter for you. You know, it's just you and them. And so it's, it's a, uh, humbling sport where you're gonna you're gonna have a humbling experience sooner or later in your life when with this sport and so you've got to be willing to accept that and move on from it just like in life you know you might have a job interview or you might have some a relationship go bad or you might have a meeting not go the way you are and it could be humbling or embarrassing or or disappointing for you but you still got to be able to move on from that to life in your life and and what else are you going to what else, how are you going to make it better then? What are you going to change for the next time you come to that part? Because there's going to be a next time in your life, just as there is in the sport of wrestling too. And it's just you. Mm-hmm. Like you can ask people for help, but it's still it's just your decision. Like how are you going to run with that too? So okay. I think that's what makes it the most intimate part of the sport too. So mm-hmm. I always think about like since, I mean, I go to all the wrestling things, I watch everything, but I don't like wrestle. Like, the feeling of being, like, alone on the mat. Like, what does that feel like? Like, everyone's it's watching you. Sometimes I, like, don't even, like, realize it. Like, once you get into the moment, you don't, like, notice it as much. But, like, before, man, I get, like, super nervous and all this because, like, I feel like I got to live up to these expectations, you know? If, like, you want to be good, you got to put in that work, all this stuff. But, like, when you go out there and you don't perform and then people are like, man, you could have been so much better than this. You could have done that. But then you're like, it's just you out there. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. The better you get, the higher your expectations yeah, definitely. are. definitely. Right? And so the better, more you have to just deal with that, the bigger that target's going to be. Mm-hmm. What were your thoughts? How was your feelings on district wrestling tournament? Me? Yeah. Like, how were you feeling with that? How? Uh, do you, going into districts, whatever year, your sophomore, junior year, whatever that my is. My sophomore year, I was – terrified yeah everyone i mean it was why were like, you so terrified i just felt like i don't know i mean everyone was watching me this is the ticket you punch your ticket to state right here this right. day and i went out there and i folded yeah i definitely folded were you mentally drained before you even started wrestling 100 yeah. percent. i was like this kid i obviously my sophomore year bumped up to 182 i was a little bit underweight i was about like 170 ish so i was like man these kids are bigger than me these two kids that i'm gonna wrestle are seniors i was like man these kids probably – they're definitely more experienced. They're bigger. I just didn't have that mindset that year. And then my junior year, I went out there, wrestled my first match, won. I was like, all right, 
So I had the Don Bosco kid who ended up being a state champion, champion at my weight. I went out there. I lost. But then the next match is a kid I've wrestled multiple times, beat. I was really tired. You can see it in the match. I'm just so tired. I, so were you mentally drained going into that match? I was, but I felt like all year I've beat this kid. Right. This is the time where I give everything I've got. This is the yeah. last chance. Yeah, you can watch that match there, and you can see in that first period, it was terrible. It was bad. Your your feet were like in concrete. Yeah. You know, you were moving like, oh, crap, here we go again. And I started I, sweating. Uh-huh. I was yeah. getting nervous. I'm like, there's yeah. no way I'm losing this kid this match. So it fast, can't be. fast forward, you win the match. Yep. You go to state tournament. Mm -hmm. Granted, I guess your experience is a little bit different at state because they had limited, limited. Yeah, uh, it wasn't full. But what when you walked out on that mat for your first round and you looked up, what were your thoughts on that? I thought, holy crap! Because last time I've been there was eighth grade for AAU state, and that's I mean, and that's like they got what yeah seventeen mats going, mm -hmm, you know, and they got yeah. all the parents crazy. So you look at that. Is there but anything there, in your life school. that would prepare you for that moment? I don't think so. Yeah. I think you just – you walk out, then it's like, oh, my God, everyone's – you feel like everyone's looking at you, even though obviously right. no one – not everybody is. There's eight mats. Yeah. yeah, and you're just – there's so much going on. You're like, oh, my goodness. I think that this that the Iowa State Wrestling Tournament is one of the – I mean, they always – everybody always says it's the best wrestling tournament around, you know, but I think – I agree. I still get goosebumps when I go yeah. out there just to coach and just looking around, and it's just a great, great experience. How how's the finals though? That's got to be a whole different atmosphere. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. It is something. Yeah, it's even co coaching. So, uh, so uh, crazy. yeah, I obviously I did not experience it as an athlete, but as a coach. So you've got to try to keep your keep your crap together mm -hmm. too, because the, you got you got these athletes that are wrestling the biggest match of their lives, you know. Yeah. And, and then if you sit there and look nervous, it's going to wear off on them too. Mm -hmm. But your insides are just going crazy. And you get out there and just seeing a packed house at Wells Fargo with three mats. I'm like, this is flipping awesome. It, it's insane. It's, it's like even not like just watching. It's just like the it's just like the best feeling in the world. Like my freshman year when when Ben won, and I was not even like a coach or anything like that. I was just watching and like that was just like like state wrestling is like the best time of the year because it's just so fun like everything about it it's great it's it maybe because it's the end of a year mm -hmm. it's the end of a, a four month period of working your tails off yeah. you know and seeing some of the best wrestlers at the state and it's just a fun atmosphere to be part of you know your fans your friends your everybody's around there and mm -hmm. obviously you guys don't have to be at school so that's always that's good. that's a bonus yeah, yeah that yeah, is it is too that that Ben Smith match though what Ooh, that, that had something. to be like the scariest match ever. Yeah, so that was that intense. Was, you know, he was it triple overtime. <laughs> yeah, so then it's zero so zero is the boringest match you ever watched. In yeah, your life, it, you know? it was Jesus. in the beginning. You know, then he the gets end. dinged for stalling after the first, and right at the end of regulation, or no, sorry, it was at the end of the first overtime. He yeah. gets dinged for stalling. Then we go in the double ride out, and uh, gosh, no, it was in the first overtime where he, that uh, the kid got in on us. Yeah. And Ben tries to do the roll through scramble that I right to his like, back oh and like, oh gosh. Then he got out and he's trying, that was right in front of us. And yeah. Oh, yeah. he's reaching out and I'm hollering at him. Oh, my, yeah. He's touching our mat, like our chair. And I'm like, God, grab our chair, grab our chair. So they call out of bounds, you know, and they obviously didn't. Yeah. But then that, that ride out, you know, and it's so, well, I guess the most gratifying part of that match and the year before when Garrett Sims won state is Ben was able to get an escape. Yep. So it was you uh, then he had to ride him out but with 20 seconds left the kid gets a gets a hits a stand up we're on our feet and Ben's able to hit a pop and drop and it's mm -hmm. what we preach we preach we preach that pop and drops are going to win championships and you're tired they suck they're hard to do but that year and then Garrett Sims if you watch his finals match he pop and dropped this big old six foot five guy two or three times and then you can just see him deflated after it's done yeah. and so to see that too and uh Obviously, I can't hide my emotions when it happens there. So Definitely. it's just, it was I crazy, mean, it's you know, but like you get excited for your kid, but you got to realize too, that, that you just, you guys, I've been on the other part of it, you know, with Jacob Krako, you know, he's two-time runner up. You just see a kid that just gets their, their hopes and dreams just shattered, you know, by losing that match too. So, so you keep it, you're excited at the beginning, then you kind of keep it in check. But then when you get up in that tunnel or back to the hotel, man, it's, it's just insane how much emotion comes like flooding out of you. And I just, it's, it's quite the deal. And yeah, I mean, obviously the finals is different, but you go, you place winner. I mean, I think you can just go down the line about different parts of the year that mm -hmm. you just have exciting things. So, so you talked about that Jacob Krakow match when he's got second twice in a row. Does that kind of like, 
does that make you feel a certain way? Like maybe we could have done this to get him a little bit there or yeah. you always second guess yourself when things don't go your way. Um, but <clears throat> you gotta, you, you gotta always know that things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't, I don't know if Jacob Craco would still have the chip on the shoulder that he does right now to be a three time all American at, you know, the collegiate level. If, yeah. if he would have been a state champ, maybe he would. I mean, I know he would. He's he's the orneriest son of gun I've ever <laughs> met in my life, you he know. Is. So, but yeah, uh, just going back, it's his junior year. The kid he wrestled from Lisbon. I mean, he just kind of owned us. We just never really could get in a match with him. Mm -hmm. Feel like our cardio was always there, but just the technique wise, he just always had our number. So it was a tough one, you know. And you know, going into his senior year, it's it. He wanted to be a one sixty. We we're fine with, but his semifinals match was actually a lot tougher, or closer match than we thought. So, yeah. kid was wrestling him tough to get in there, and obviously came out on top. But yeah, it just it was a blah match. Like he yeah. got taken down, got a reversal, then they gave him an escape, and you just knew that you had to get a stall call or a takedown. And you know, it just it, that was just an, an emotional, emotional loss. I mean. I, probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to be part of as a coach in my life, just to mm -hmm. know that the time, just not in our wrestling room, but the off season that kid put into it. I mean, he's it just live and breathe it. And it just, not just that, but God, just a great kid, mm -hmm. great person to be around. Um, tell you what, give me, give me another one of him in my lifetime of coaching. And that, that'd be great, you yeah. know? So hopefully he comes back and helps out a lot. But the th biggest thing, the most important thing, that I was most proud of after that match when he got beat in the finals, his last high school match of his career, and he never got the dream that I would be a state champion, is we went back to the hotel room, and 15 minutes later, he's out in the hallway thanking the people that were there for coming and supporting him. And he just had the biggest dream. That's an 18-year-old kid that just did that, you know, after he could have went and sulked and cried and done whatever he wanted, but he did. So seeing that, there was a little bit like, well, you know, we, we did we did something right. You know, there there's something that we did right about – you know, having that pride of, of being thankful for the little things in your life, and that's what he did too. So, you know, but, yeah, he's he's a one of a kind, man. Yeah, he it's is. A, he's a, it's, a, it's, hard, it's hard not to get emotional when talking about that moment. That's tough. Mm -hmm. I've watched that match twice since that's happened, and I, I have not finished him. Yeah, so. that is tough. Yeah. Got anything else? I don't know. I just, like, state wrestling in general, I, that's the reason I feel like I became a – part of the wrestling team because I remember when Garrett's finals match I wasn't there but me and my dad were watching on the TV and I always liked wrestling but I feel like because it was our school you know I was like this is fun like watching this and then my freshman year uh one of the managers she couldn't do it and I was just happened to be in the class with her and she just looked at me and she's like you want to be a wrestling manager and I was like uh <laughs> I was like I don't know and then she was like and she went and talked to you and then I just so I do you feel like the, the culture of our program is a big reason why people like you wanted to be part of it too mm -hmm. like it's it's a I, I feel like everybody you know boy girl whatever wants to have it's it's a fun thing to be part of yeah you know and you guys make it that way too like it's like the managers are like the unsung heroes of lightening the mood in practices <laughs> i feel like you yeah, know the you music you guys i guess the, it's kind of your phone but like the music right? gets me going the music gets pumping you know like their personalities though like i mean Kanky, you guys don't know this there. She's a mean mother trucker here. Yeah. Like she's, she, she gets us. Like she gets what we're trying to do. Like, and she just, you can just see the wheel spinning like, man, like she wants to get out there and wrestle with us. I feel at times like, sometimes like, I wants to go and do. do this. Like she just, I could just see it in her eyes. Like the passion that she has for the sport. And it's great. I love it. Like I told, I talked to my wife a lot about it. I'm like, these girls, like, it's just, you're not somebody that just sits there and just kind of like, she's not on her phone during practice all the time doing that. Like she's paying attention and just like is invested in our program just as much you know, as, as we are. One time during a weight training, for some reason, it was the day after one of our home duels and a lot of the kids, there's only like maybe two wrestlers in our weight training, three. And the ones who weren't in wrestling, they were like, oh, I wish I wrestled. That was so fun watching that. And then they just had matches. And then I wrestled, <laughs> I wrestled Maddie. And I actually knew what I was doing because I was like, this is because I sit there every day in practice and I watch you and I know what everything means. Right. Did you ever consider going out? I, <laughs> in the girls maybe team. senior year? Uh, senior no. Year? no? <laughs> you know, uh. I thought about that, but. I'm the type of person that if I'm not like super good at it, then I don't want to do it. 
So How do you get super good at something? Are you super yeah. good at anything that you, got, you are doing? That's why I take time I don't do, to get good <laughs> at it, though. Because, I don't know, but... Why do you opt for softball? Okay, well, that... <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> that is because... I don't know. That's... I don't even know. It's, it's just my favorite. It's fun. Okay, why, why is it fun? It's fun. Wrestling's fun. It is. Yeah, wrestling Yeah, is but being a awesome. wrestling manager is fun. Mm. And I don't have to lose matches because I don't know how I would be able to handle that. I mean, I, I would, but... Losing is not fun. And I, I enjoy the other part, like the kind of like the behind the scenes part, like the doing track. Every every match I, or every meet, I ask you, do I get to do track today? Because I actually, I love doing that so much. It makes my life easier. And it makes <laughs> me look a lot more smarter than what I am because <laughs> having a manager that knows what she's doing and making things go a lot easier with that, I'm like, hey, we got one. I got one. I got one. You know, <laughs> I can brag about that. It's great there. So, and then you saw your training Stella last night. So that was good yeah. to see too. Is there one girl in our uh, school that you think would be a really good wrestler that's not out for wrestling? Hmm. I have to go through the line. Who's, Who's pretty aggressive? Pretty aggressive. I think Grace could be pretty solid. I think yeah. Grace would too. Yeah. How about a, like a lighter weight person there? That's like just kind of kinda, one that could be in a room. Yeah. That maybe has like she. This person like they play basketball and there. they get really intense and has scream and like six fouls yeah. in like seven minutes. Seriously, if they would have called, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys have been to a girls basketball game lately, but if you see. Like, if these officials called every foul that Maddie Shade had on the court, <laughs> she would have 26 in a game. Yeah. She would have fouled out five times. Guaranteed. <laughs> Do you guys disagree? No, I don't no, disagree. I agree. So could you see her as a wrestler? Yeah. Holy smokes. I definitely Coming could. straight yeah. forward, and she would be hammering clubs and getting to it. And, like, if there was, like, an overtime match or she lost, she would be the one bristling up. And, like, uh -huh. She's awesome. definitely, like, the type where you're just stubborn. You would – especially if you're in overtime, you would not – you would not – no, but it would be a blast. Like, yeah. look at you're, yeah. you're a tank with that. <laughs> so Cash there's number daughter. one. See, I, I mean, we could have had, we could have a pretty solid girls lineup. I think definitely. If, Next if year, we had dual se so. dual seasons here. If, Something you need to talk to Mrs. Barons about dual season. Would you have done it if we had dual season basketball? At least right? tried. I want to be able to eat whatever I want. You can eat you whatever you want. Don't give you, me this. Yeah, you this don't is have a, to. okay. Here we go. Misconception. <laughs> yeah. Maddie's shade. Gosh darn it. You, no kid is made to not eat what they want no, no every kid can do what they want and yeah. be whatever weight they want they choose but he, he that's, that's, that's his choice, choice. My, my okay choice it's his that. choice so you could come you can be my 285 pounder then yeah. maddie eat whatever you want <laughs> every, drink whatever you want heck i know you do it anyway so <laughs> you do that so you get blow up to 200 pounds it'd be great to be wrestling. so don't use that for an excuse that's a yeah. bogus excuse every yeah. yeah every year the first day he, he always says I'm not going to force you to do anything. It's your choice. So, Maddie. There it is. Yeah. Is so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're going to well, do it next year? You're an idiot. <laughs> you're a senior. She's going to wrestle at you and I? I don't know. Oh. If we, next year. Oh, no. Oh, we just, no. you heard it here. No. We got Hoyt's new training partner at you and I. No. Yeah. No. Tomorrow, they no said. Way. Let's, they, let's, let's touch on this a little bit here, Kanky. What? This this little secret thing. Oh, that we got there's going nothing here. We, we do this. No. Do you think that they? Do you think either one this? of them has talked about um, going to you and I together? Like, do you think that they're either one is influenced about that made their decision oh, to go I, there? I think one of them is. Yeah, I chose think, to go there first. I, so, yeah, do you think so? So it had to be Maddie then. Yeah, well, I Maddie, chose to go there Maddie, first. you are going to you and I, right? Like. Yeah. And, like, but so Bro am I. But Brody, you said I think I'm going to. No, I have yeah. the housing contract signed up. Everything, the meal plan. I've been married for 17 years. Your parents have been married a long time too, Kanky. Have you heard a couple bicker more than Maddie Shade and Brody Hoyt? Uh, no. No. Oh my goodness. This they is bicker. not real. It's a true story. No. This you is heard it here first, Jack. What do you think over there? <laughs> It's oh. better not get released. No, this yeah. is we're all just fake. we're just talking here. It's fake news. Yeah, let's talk about. He said fake news. It's let's all talk fake about. Guys. Let's talk about our boy Jack over there. And yeah, his, Jack. So Jack. we haven't had a wrestling room romance in a couple years. Like yeah, we always yeah. talk about one, but how do you feel like that's going, Kanky, this year? Well, <laughs> I think Jack gets a little a little shy, a little nervous. You think he does? Yeah. So I feel like Jack's practice. I think he's just too cool. You know, what Jack's yeah. practice effort has been bumped up a little bit, a step up. Well, this he's got to beat Zane. To uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it's been it's been kind of crazy. Like, so see, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's just been like I'll take it. You, you know, know I actually have, have noticed, like especially from freshman year to now, Jack has just changed so much. Like he's so much more just 
Yeah, Jack. Is it because yeah. he's turning into a man? I think so. <laughs> is that why? I think so. What about the hair, guys? Let's talk the about hair. the hair here. What do we think? Okay, here? so not it's too g- long ago, he got a haircut at my house for my mom. Oh, but it's, was it really a haircut? It was no. like maybe. It was like three months no, Look no, it was years. not. Look at him and him and Maddie. They're they, almost very similar could, hair yeah, styles almost. right now. Like, look at it. It's off to the side. It's look at it's right through the, the part in the middle. You need to cornrow it. So, oh, okay. he also said he he dye it blonde. Jack would dye it blonde is what he said. <laughs> you got dye it blonde and have it that way for a week. You can't cut it right away. Yeah. So, how much does it drive you guys nuts when Jack's wrestling and, he has and his hair comes oh in his face? Oh my god! And he, he does this when we were. He does this move. At, right? he moves um, out. I don't even remember where we were at, but I was doing track and there was a kid sitting next to me and Jack is wrestling and you know like without his glasses Jack can't see anything so you can just <laughs> tell with that. But that kid's like, how can that guy even see his hair is in his face? And I was like, oh, even with his hair not in his face, he still do you think, not see. Do you think he does it just to? pee people off like I like, oh, honestly I know, can't. I know I this pisses care. my yeah. dad off I'm gonna keep my hair long and I'm gonna go why like does this it, why don't yeah, you just let Ella braid it she wants to so bad huh. but cornrows that's braids who who is more blind you've wrestled with them both Drew Slaymaker or Jack Marshall it's gotta be Drew yeah. Drew has to be more blind than Jack <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew, uh. Drew's color blind too yeah so it's okay. Though. Jack could not. Jack couldn't find his glasses on the table yesterday. Yeah. Right? No. Oh, I heard you talking. About I literally that. heard you <laughs> say right that. here, Jack. I, I heard you say that. Did you just go look for your glasses over something I like that? He reached. He, they they were here. He reached here. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> no. <laughs> who cares if they moved them or not? It was like six inches. <laughs> Because he can't Cause, see. Because, yeah, he can't see. He's just got to feel it. He's like, oh, Did you hear good, Jack? Yeah, with all that hair. I mean, you, well, you think about the fi- the senses, right? When mm-hmm. one sense yeah. goes, you got to have good I other senses. Yeah. I know I can tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> no duh. I yeah. actually think about that. Like, when you are ob- you obviously always are screaming, can they even hear what you're saying? Uh, yeah. It's kind of like faint until you, like, look at him, and you're like, he's yelling at you. It's an F you. I'll do yeah. what I want. That's kind of Jack. He kind of like looks and he's like puts his head oh, down. Oh, Jack, like, get a stance. Yeah, like he's third, get in a stance. holy crap. <laughs> Screw you. Yeah, he's like, no, nah, let me just, just let me move, move my hair out of my face. Oh, let me God, just do yeah. that. Let me move yeah, my hair out of my face and get double this. and yeah. get double leg. Oh, he's got long legs. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's why right. you should have a better stance. Yeah. <laughs> I can't bend. He looks like Slenderman out there. He's just like all long and lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your next guest? You guys got coming up? We got Mrs. Barons. Ooh, yeah, that'd be a good one there. What's yeah. on the topic for that one? Ooh, probably some basketball. Yeah. Maybe some of her backstory of how she came to. Oh, she Valley. is a good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one there too. She says this would be a long one with her. Yeah. Hey, let's talk. Ask her. Like, make sure you make a note. If there was unlimited fouls in a basketball game, how many would Maddie Shade have? Yes. Or who would have the most? Or how practices who? go? Her or who? Who would it be between? <laughs> like, she would have the most. It's obviously. definitely Maddie up top. Who would be second though? Like, what if Maddie Shea could run a basketball practice? What would it look like? That's Maddie? what you. That's what another question we have. <laughs> so there's two. We got to get off the Maddie bandwagon on this because she could have been state champ wrestler for us. So yeah. yeah. Now screw her now. Let's basketball. not talk about this. There, yeah. So. Whatever, dude. I think we should put Maddie against Lily Luft. Oh Jesus. <laughs> you. I think y'all have fun. I think yeah. All the sports that want to do. Yeah. Doesn't do track. Does soccer. Soccer. We're cha- we're changing Stop. that this year. Mm-hmm. You're not being the coach, so I'm not. You told me if you were the coach, I still have your job. I'm gonna be the coach. Why not? I just told you I was. So okay. if he's the coach, you're gonna do track. I I am. So there you go. So you heard Maddie's, do, Maddie's doing track. Yes. Yeah. Do, do both. Both. Yeah. How? What do you mean soccer? I, I could do. I did both. My you weren't gonna do soccer. Uh well, okay, I do both. Mm-hmm. This is this is hogwash. It is. So like this is you you okay, this is a a guaranteed running at the state track meet. Guaranteed can come up here. Like mm-hmm. you could be one of the top twenty four in the state and in any event. And you're not gonna do it. Cool. You're guaranteed to be a state qualifier wrestler. Guaranteed to be a and then and you won't don't do it? How big a waste would that be? And that's what we have. We have a gem sitting right here, a little <laughs> pistol here that can run like a freaking 12-second 100, probably about a 24. We can't get over a 200. Then she might need like a inhaler break. Uh, uh, sure, an inhaler. We'll call it an inhaler. Yeah. 
800 my tail. Hundreds. There's no way you run a ta- 800. Okay, in eighth grade. You're not running one now, though. Look at your legs. They're two foot long. You're built for (laughs) ones and twos. So, and then you're guaranteed to run the biggest track meet of the year on the Blue Oval like you could talk for years, and you're not going to do it. Senior year, Maddie. No, then you throw up and run. Track does make you very Jesus. nervous. I'm not going to lie. Then we'll, I guess we'll put you over on the 4x2 four or 4x1. We'll put you on the far curve then. Yeah. There you go. So no one sees you. It's like the people warming up see you. We'll ask. We'll request to run the open one on the back stretch then. <laughs> By yourself. Yeah. Open one on the back stretch. <laughs> I ain't running anything on the stretch. You just can't take it when we're, we know that we're right. Like no, you you no. have never been wrong like in your life if you ask <laughs> you. But we're right. Yeah. And you can't take it. All right. What time does the bell ring, guys? Uh, pretty soon, I think. Oh, there we go. Oh, it did? Actually. All right. All right. Wrap it up. I think that's pretty good for this first <laughs> podcast. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks Peace for out. having me. Yep. See ya.